Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today on Unbroken Studio Software Tutorials, we're going to be covering the ZX Spectrum. Now there are literally hundreds of ZX Spectrum emulators for Windows floating around. Now my personal favorite is Spectaculator, but it is a paid emulator. So in this video, we're going to be using RetroArch along with a core called Fuse.LibRetro. Let's go ahead and get started. There's a few things you need to know about the ZX Spectrum file formats and controllers before we start this. I will leave links down in the description for you guys. First up, worldofspectrum.org. If you have not visited this website, if you have not thought about using the ZX Spectrum emulator or ZX Spectrum in general, you need to read through this site. Everything that anybody ever wanted to know about the ZX Spectrum is here. This just happens to be the Spectrum Archive file formats. There are a few file formats that we can use here. We have Z80. This is in the description so you can read through this. SLT, tap, dot tap, which is tape. And we also have TZX. In this video, I'm gonna be focusing on dot tap. These are my favorite. They're easy to come by. I already have tons of them and they work great. Another great resource, and you need to do some research before you start this, is to go right over here to the Fuse Libretro GitHub page. If we scroll down, this is the core we're gonna be using. It tells us a lot about the core itself. This emulates the Spectrum 16K, 48K, 48K NTSC, 128K, Spectrum 2, 2A, pretty much every Spectrum that's come out, this will emulate. And it does a really good job. Now I know a lot of you love to use a controller when you're doing your emulation on your Windows machine. A lot of ZX Spectrum games do support controllers. So my favorite is setting mine to the Kempston controller. Most of the great games use Kempston or Sinclair. At the main menu of most of these games, you will be able to choose which controller you want. And as long as that controller is set up in RetroArch, you should have no trouble using a physical controller instead of the keyboard to play your ZX Spectrum games. Some games flat out do not support controllers at all, like Tetris. I have not been able to get Tetris to work with a controller. You have to use your keyboard. So most of my games that I'm going to be installing now support controllers. First thing you're gonna need are some ZX Spectrum games, or ROMs. Now, these are some of the best games made for the ZX Spectrum, in my opinion. There are tons of games made, thousands of great games for the ZX Spectrum. These are some of the games I like to play, and these are very easy to set up because they do support the Kimston controller. I have mine on my desktop in a folder called CX ROMs. I'm gonna open up a file explorer, and I'm gonna to head to my LaunchBox folder. My LaunchBox folder is in Users, ETA Prime, LaunchBox. I also have a Games folder inside of here, and I have a Platform folder. So I'm gonna take these, put them right here. Now I have my ZX Spectrum games right here in my Games Platforms. Let's go ahead and start LaunchBox. Now we're gonna be using RetroArch, so if you don't have RetroArch installed, we're gonna leave links in the description. Brad had covered RetroArch a lot and he did a really good job, so you need to go back and watch those. If you've been using LaunchBox for a while, chances are you have RetroArch up and running already. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go to Tools. We're gonna to go to Import, ROM Files. From here, we're gonna click Next. This is the file wizard here. I'm just gonna click Add Folder. As you saw, all of my ZX Spectrum games are in a folder called ZX ROMs. They're under Users, ETA Prime, LaunchBox, Games, Platforms, ZX ROMs. Click OK. Next. Platform for imported ROMs. Luckily, we have a Sinclair ZX Spectrum in here. So we're gonna scroll down and find Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Next, choose an emulator. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add an emulator. 
you can always drop down and just call it RetroArch, but I'd want to set mine up as the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. From here, my emulator application path. I'm going to go to Browse. Now I have RetroArch, C Drive, Users, ETA Prime, LaunchBox, Emulators, RetroArch. Scroll down till we see the application path. Double click. Associated platforms. From here, I'm just going to type in Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Now, I've created a little text document that's going to be in the description for you. This is going to make life easier for all of us here. I'm going to go to my desktop. Fuse ZX. Just going to open it up. From here, we can see our associated platform, ZX Spectrum, default command line. This is what we're going to need to run the ZX Spectrum emulator within RetroArch. So go ahead and copy this. We're going to paste it in the default command line parameter. Make sure your box is checked. And we're going to click OK. Click Next. I'm going to use my ROMs in their current location. Search for game information from LaunchBox Games Database. If you don't want some type of box art in here, you can go ahead and uncheck it. I usually leave everything checked, and it works just fine. If you don't have an EMU Movies account, I definitely recommend going and signing up. It's free to use, but you can donate to unlock a few extra perks. Same thing when importing our images. If there's something you do not want in here, let's just say screenshot game select, go ahead and uncheck it. Everything stays checked for me, it works great. Next, would you like to specify any custom options? No, not for the ZX Spectrum. Click Next. From here, it's going to give us the name of the game or the ROM, our file location, and if we scroll over, we can see the extension. So I only have one Z80 game here. The rest are dot tap. Click Finish. It's going to download all of our box art and game information. If you're importing a thousand games, it's going to take a long time. I only have a few here, so it's not going to take that long. Eleven games were imported successfully. Click OK. Now over here in the left hand side we have Sinclair ZX Spectrum. And my games are here with some information and box art. So now we need to go download that core within RetroArch. We're just going to right click on any of these games. Open Sinclair ZX Spectrum. This is going to open up RetroArch. From here we need to scroll down to Online Updater, Core Updater, if we press up on our controller, we're going to go all the way to the bottom and download ZX Spectrum Fuse. Should download pretty quick. And there you have it. Back up. We're going to exit RetroArch. We're going to start a game now. Like I mentioned in the beginning, most of these games will support a controller, but a lot of them do not. One that I am 100% positive supports the Kimston controller is Jetpack. I'm going to double click. Now when we go into RetroArch, let's back up because we need to set our controller for the ZX Spectrum. So from here, we're going to go to History, Jetpack. This is the game that's still running. We're going to enter here and scroll all the way down to Controls. At the very top, User 1 Device Type. You can choose Cursor Joystick, Retropad, Kempston Joystick, or Sinclair 1 Joystick. I love the Kempston works with a lot of games. Make sure this is chosen. We can go back and resume. Now that that's set, you won't have to reset it for another game. You just need to do that on your initial startup of your first ZX Spectrum game within RetroArch. Resume. Okay, so this is where these games get a little bit tricky. As you can see, we have five options on the screen now. One, two, three, four, five. I want a one-player game, 
It's already chosen, so that's good. But I want to use my Kimston joystick, so I need to press 4. You can use your physical keyboard, or you can use the virtual keyboard that's built into the Fuse emulator. I have an Xbox One controller set up within RetroArch. I'm going to press Select. It'll bring up my virtual keyboard. I'm going to use my D-pad to navigate. And my B button on my Xbox One controller is my confirm button. So I'm just going to exit out. I want to make sure that my Kimson joystick is chosen. So I'll press select. Scroll to number four. I'm going to press B. Now my Kimson joystick will be used. We want to start the game. Select five. So now my controller works, and I just died horribly bad. But my Xbox One controller works here, no problem at all. Except for the way I'm playing this game, I just need to go ahead and get it done. There we are. Oh, we gotta build our spaceship, and then, oh no, I'm out of juice, baby. We have to fill it up, so, oh. Come on. There we go. So after I put the top on, I'll start getting some fuel cells that need to be stacked up also. But I keep dying. You'll definitely get the hang of this. This is a fun game if you've never tried it before. It's very challenging, actually, for being such an old game. So I'm going to go collect my fuel, and I'm going to put it in my spaceship. I'm going to press exit on my keyboard, or if you have the paid version of LaunchBox, you can use controller automation to exit the emulator. So that's pretty much it. I'm just going to go with another game here. We're going to go with Manic Miner. Double click. So here, again, the ZX Spectrum was a keyboard console. It was a mini computer that was pretty much just a keyboard. My favorite one was the 48K, and I've always tried to get one, but they're so hard to come by here in the States. Press select, and we're gonna need to go to enter. Or if you would like to, you can use your physical keyboard, but I know a lot of people just love to sit back with their controller. And the Kimson controller is already pre-set up within Manic Miner. This is one of the most famous games for the ZX Spectrum. If you touch anything, you're dead. So we got that Zoidberg up there, little wind up Zoidberg looking dude. Plants, the ground is pretty safe for you, but the plants will kill you. So we'll go over, oh, and I'm gonna get squished. So it's gonna take some time to get used to it. The games aren't as responsive as let's say NES games even. And this is not due to the emulator, this is due to how the games were programmed. So that's it for now guys, I really appreciate you watching. I hope this helped you out. You're really gonna to have to go through and find what games work with a controller if you don't wanna use a keyboard. There is a virtual keyboard, but you're not gonna be able to play the games with that virtual keyboard because it does cover the screen. It's not gonna be practical. If there are games out there that need a keyboard, you can use your physical keyboard. Shouldn't be a problem. The original ZX Spectrum was a keyboard. It was a keyboard computer, so that's what we got. The Kimston controller and the Sinclair controller worked in a lot of games, and a majority of the games, but there are some games you'll find that just do not support controllers. I chose the Fuse emulator for this video because if you already have RetroArch installed, we can use Fuse. It works great. I've been using it for a long time on my Linux machine. Works great on Windows. There are better ZX Spectrum emulators out there. Like the one I mentioned at the beginning, Spectaculator. It's about 16 bucks, I believe. But if you're not going to play ZX Spectrum that much, you're probably not going to want to fork out $16 for an emulator. I completely understand that. There is another emulator called Specky, which used to be my favorite one for Windows 7. Since I've upgraded to Windows 10, I have had nothing but trouble with Specky. I'm hoping for an update that's going to fix all the graphical glitches and graphical errors that I'm getting, but I've tried it on three different machines, hundreds of different settings, and I'm still getting the same issues on each machine.
That's why I chose Fuse. And thank you guys for watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe because we got a lot more coming. If you have any requests, let us know down in the comments and we will try our hardest to get to them next week. Like always, thanks for watching.